So I went to the gym yesterday and I encountered all of this. So there is some heavy construction going on in my gym and I could not do the exercise that I wanted to do. And this got me thinking, out of the hundreds and possibly thousands of hours that I have listened to YouTube fitness videos, I have never heard someone talk about this. How to modify your workout when you cannot do the exercises that you want to do. So that's what we're going to get into today, and I think is a very important topic. You might not use it today or tomorrow, but I guarantee at some point in the future, you will use the concepts in this video. And if you're at home, due to coronavirus, you can definitely use some of the strategies in this video. So I went into the gym, and I could only find a bar and 80 kilos worth of plates. Now the plan had been to squat heavy and sumo deadlift heavy. For me, a sumo deadlift heavy is like 150 to 160 kilos. But with only 100 kilos, I had to modify the movement in order to still get a stimulus. For me, doing a sumo deadlift with 100 kilos just is not going to get the job done. So, and this is point one, I modified the movement to make it more challenging. So I switched to a Romanian sumo deadlift. So basically, this is where my legs are quite straight and I'm more leaned over. So this is going to put much more stress on the hamstrings and the glutes, uh, even with a lighter weight. Even with 100 kilos, this was quite stimulatory. It also puts a lot more stress on the spinal erectors because you are in a more bent over position. Same with the traps, same with the lats. Because of this bent over position, not using the quads, it is a much more challenging exercise. Another thing that you could do to get more benefit from a lighter weight is just to do more volume. The plan on sumo deadlifts was just going to be probably four to five sets of four to six reps, somewhere in that range. Instead, I was planning on five sets of 16 reps with this variation. And I didn't even get five sets of 16. I got three sets of 16, a set of 14, and a set of 10, just because this was so fatiguing and so challenging. Remember, you can build muscle at a variety of rep ranges. So you can build muscle with sets of three, sets of 30, sets of 50 even, uh, as long as you're close to failure and really challenging yourself. So don't think that you have to be in that 8 to 12 rep range to build muscle. You don't. You just need to work hard, progressively overload, and be close to failure. Another thing you could do is slow eccentrics. So if I'm deadlifting normally, I don't really control the eccentric. I basically just let it down. But because there were workers nearby, and some were actually sleeping on the floor, I didn't want to make a ton of noise. So I controlled the eccentric, I didn't bang the weights off of the floors, and this is really, really good for muscle growth. Yeah, it's also polite, <laughs> but it's also really good for growth because you are stretching that muscle and causing micro tears, which causes the muscle to grow back bigger and stronger. In fact, the eccentric, I would say, is actually more important than the concentric. So next time you say, I'm gonna go to the gym and lift some weights, maybe you should say, I'm gonna to go to the gym and lower some weights. Another concept that you can use is the concept of the mind-muscle connection. Now, I know this sounds like bro science. This sounds like the most bro science thing I've ever heard, but it's a real thing, and it is absolutely backed by science in many, many studies, which I will link in the description. This is where knowing your body and knowing your anatomy is crucial. If you don't know what muscles and exercise is working, you can't really focus on those muscles because you really have no idea what you're doing. So when I'm doing this exercise, I'm focusing on, on sitting my hips back and getting a stretch in my adductors and in my hamstrings. And you can see this in this case. Um, I'm really trying to open up the hips, open your taint, as uh, Ed Cohen says. And this can make the exercise much, much more effective. And it's really training the prime movers for the deadlift. And this was my last set. You can really see me struggling, even with this baby weight. This is like just above body weight on a deadlift. And this is about 50% of my one rep max. And it's still extremely difficult because of all the factors that I mentioned. Another thing you can try to do is be explosive. So I couldn't barbell back squat. There was no squat rack in this gym. And so instead I did these dumbbell jump squats. And they're not very explosive because I'm tired from the deadlifts and also because I'm white. But still, even me trying to jump high is activating more motor units and more muscle fibers than just a normal squat. 
Another thing you can do is a back extension. This doesn't take a huge amount of weight. This is like 30 kilos, and yet it is still very challenging because the leverages are not as favorable. Another thing you could do is supersets. So this is when you do one exercise and then without resting, you do another exercise. Normally, I don't really like these just because I like to have quality with all of my sets. But if you are limited in equipment or limited in weight, I think this is a viable strategy to try to get more work done in less time and try to reach a higher level of fatigue, which could stimulate the games. One thing to keep in mind is that when you're switching out exercises, not all exercises are equal in terms of stress. So a leg extension is not the same as a squat. They both do work the quads, but the stress is going to be a much more stressful exercise. And this is not just because the squat works, you know, the hamstrings, the glutes, the core, the lower back, the traps, the arms a little bit. No. A lot of this is just due to the inherent mechanics of the exercise. So when you're doing a squat, it actually puts a stretch on all of these muscles. Whereas when you're doing a leg extension, it doesn't really do any kind of stretch. There's no real eccentric to the motion. It's really just a contraction. And so it's a good pumping movement, but it's not really going to cause as much stress and stretch and uh, damage to the muscle. All right, this was today, day two, and I thought I would go in and I would bench press and I would do pull-ups, and there was no bench, and there was no pull-up stand. So instead, I hit up some rows, I hit up some machines, and this is just something you have to deal with sometimes. If you go into the gym and you really want to do something, but you can't, sometimes you just have to say, okay, I won't do this today. I'm going to do something else. And almost always, doing that something else is going to be much more effective than doing nothing. In almost every case, I would say 95% of cases or more, doing something is going to be much better than just going home. So I actually didn't have a bench to do shoulder presses, so I actually uh, put my camera there and then I sat here and I did shoulder presses like that. And, you know, sometimes you have to improvise, you have to adapt, you have to overcome. And, you know, it, even if something is not an ideal situation, just getting in there and giving it your best shot and putting in an honest effort can really make a big difference to your long-term progress. If you have a handful of workouts every year that you would have skipped otherwise, but instead you find a way to keep doing them, that can make a really, really big difference in your long-term progress. So here I'm hitting up a machine shoulder press and I'm doing a drop set. This is actually like a triple or a quadruple or a quintuple drop set, I've lost count. I think I started with 70 kilos and I dropped 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, and I ended up with just 20 kilos that I was lifting. And as you can see, I'm pretty much going to failure or pretty close to failure with all of these reps. And so when you're going close to failure for like a minute straight, that is a massive hypertrophic stimulus. It might not be that good for strength, but in terms of size, this really will get you some impressive results. When it comes to drop sets, I would recommend about 15 to 30% for each drop. If it's less than 15%, if you're only dropping the weight by about 10%, that's really not that big of a difference, so you might not even feel it. On the other hand, if you drop more than 30%, that drop is so big. If you drop from like 100 kilos to 60 kilos, that is such a big drop that you really, it's just too much. So you go from a heavy weight to a light weight and you're just you know pumping out reps way too easily. So I would say 15 to 30% per drop is going to be the most effective. And the most important thing is to keep pushing the entire time. So you want to keep pushing and pushing and pushing as much as you can, as hard as you can the entire time. Another very, very important thing to keep in mind is that if you're swapping two movements, they should be within the same movement pattern. So if you swap a hinge for a hinge, that's okay. If you swap a hinge for a press, not okay. So if you're trying to swap a deadlift for a push press, those really are two completely different movements and you're getting a completely different stimulus. So it's not really interchangeable at all. 
There are some exceptions though. You can swap a hinge for a squat, and in some cases the stimulus is pretty similar. You can swap a pull, a vertical pulling exercise, like a pull down or a pull up, that kind of thing. You can swap those for a row, and they're working pretty similar muscles. They're both working the back, the biceps, the forearms. You can swap a push for a press, and those are also pretty similar. So a bench press and an overhead press, yes, the uh, bench press is working the chest a lot more, but still they're both working the shoulders, they're both working the triceps, and they're an overall pretty similar movement pattern. So hinge squat, pull row, push, and press, those are somewhat interchangeable. Not 100% inter interchangeable, but they're pretty close. One important thing to keep in mind though is that not all exercises are equal. As I said before, a normal sumo deadlift is generally still going to be more stressful than a sumo Romanian deadlift, just because you are using more weight and it's using the quads a lot more. So anything where you use more muscle is generally going to be more fatiguing. However, one thing to keep in mind is that not all exercises are created equal. If you're doing a competition with bench press, that is going to be more stressful than a closed grip bench press. Just because you're using the chest more, you're using overall more weight, which is going to put more stress on the joints, the central nervous system, which isn't that big a deal, uh, the peripheral nervous system, but it's just an, an overall more stressful exercise. A sumo deadlift is going to be overall more stressful than a sumo RDL just because it's using the quads, it's using more weight, it's testing the grip a little bit more, and it's an overall more stressful exercise. Now that's not to say that heavier is always more stressful. I could probably do a 200 kilo calf raise, but if I tried a 200 kilo deadlift right now, that would be extremely stressful on my body. So it, it's not always the case that more weight is more stressful. You really do have to play it by ear. And this does take a little bit of experience knowing how hard you can push yourself and which exercises take more out of you. Another very important consideration. Now it's one thing if you can't have enough plates or the machine you wanted to use isn't there or it's taken. But another important consideration for modifying your workout on the fly is if you are getting pain or discomfort. Obviously some discomfort is tolerable, expected, and maybe even encouraged in some cases. But if you are getting pain, or if something just doesn't feel right, you feel you're about to get injured, it would make sense to try to modify the movement or to substitute it out for a similar movement that does not cause pain. There are some movements that I just don't really do. I don't really do good mornings because they tend to just not feel that comfortable. I don't feel them in my hamstrings. I feel them in my back and not in a good way. Uh, I do overhead press pretty sparingly for a similar reason. I just feel more comfortable doing a Z press. And because you've bought my book, you have a variety of exercises to choose from. You probably have 10 or 15 exercises per movement pattern. And so I would say there's no real reason to keep doing an exercise that is giving you pain. We are all built a little bit differently. Uh, our anatomy is not 100% the same. Every joint is a little bit different. It feels a little bit different when you're doing different movements. And so it's important to be able to modify movements and not feel bad about it. If I do a machine and it feels wrong, I don't say that's a bad machine. I don't say that machines are bad in general. I just don't use that machine. It's just a bad machine for me. So just because you want to do a movement doesn't mean you have to do a movement. So I would say the best course of action is going to be in your training, use a variety of movements and track them all. That way, if you go to the gym and you can't do one of them, just do a different movement. <laughs> Very simple. Um, if you're not feeling a particular movement or you're a little bit less comfortable with that movement, you can just switch to something else that you know is right for you. And honestly, this takes time. This takes more than probably one year of training or two years of training. Almost all the people I've seen who have gotten good results over five years, 10 years, 15 years, they all have their baby movements, their pet movements that they really, really like and they know that they can come back to. These movements that have served them well in the past and they can you know figure that will serve them well in the future and i think having 
you know, two to four exercises per movement pattern that you have mastered and that you know how to do well is a great investment for your training. Another very important thing is to change your expectation. So if you go into the gym with the expectation of hitting a sumo deadlift, one rep max, and then there's no bar, <laughs> or there's a bar but not enough plates, then it's going to be very easy to get disappointed. So I would take a more stoic, Spartan mindset, and don't expect anything. Just go to the gym with a more general goal. So don't go to the gym with the goal of, oh, I want to hit 180 kilos on the deadlift. Go to the gym with the goal of, I want to trash my hamstrings. Um, or I want to do 10 sets of hinging movements. Uh, this more flexible mentality makes it a lot easier to fulfill your goals. And it's a lot easier to not get disappointed as well. So if you just go in there and you're like, I want to beat the crap out of my biceps, there are a hundred different ways you can do that. There are dozens of exercises combined with dozens of high intensity techniques, and you don't need that much equipment. In fact, you probably don't need any equipment if you have a more general goal. But if you have a very specific goal, it's just so easy to not have that specific piece of equipment. Especially like if you're traveling, if you go to a hotel gym, you shouldn't have any expectations because most hotel gyms kind of suck. So that's where just that little change in your expectation can have a huge difference in your results. Because just by that little mental change, you can guarantee that you always get a good workout. I have never had a disappointing workout in the past one or two years, just because I have a more general mindset, a more general approach to my training. So if you made it to the end of the video, you are a hardcore fan. So let me know what videos that you want to see whether it's more programming videos, whether it's more specific exercises. If you want me to go back and do calisthenics exercise tutorials, I'll do that for you. I won't like it, but I'll do it for you. Uh, let me know if you want more uh, YouTubers reviewed, if you want any other types of videos, any feedback on my editing, on my style of video. My watch time is going way, way up, so I think what I'm doing is working but I still want to hear your specific feedback, my loyal fans, my loyal viewers, anything at all that you think can make the channel better, I am happy to hear it. So make sure to like and subscribe, stay safe wherever you are, and I will see you next time. Peace.